back here at Cox Pavilion, week two of Slam Ball, right here in Viva Las Vegas. And we have some Vegas royalty here with us, owner and CEO of Circa Resort and Casino, as well as the Golden Gate and the D. Your sponsorships are all over this place. Derek, when you heard that Slam Ball was coming back and it was coming back to Vegas, what made you want to be a part of all of this? Oh, we jumped on it. And then, you know, when we had a chance to meet Mason and we got to know what he was doing, he brought the whole crew out to Las Vegas. He, he moved everybody out here. They're all staying here. And this, this energy is unbelievable. And, they, and everything with ESPN has been amazing. This, this game is so much fun. And Stormy, you know a lot about hockey. You know a lot about basketball. This blend has been unbelievable. The excitement in this in this is unbelievable. And I, if we can bring something to this, we're going to bring some a little little bit of gambling to all this. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're already posting numbers for uh, for the next game. Just just for fun. Just for fun. Because I think next week we're going to actually post real numbers. We're going to post a Las Vegas line on next week's games. That is awesome news to hear. Because I was curious, obviously. Circa is the home of the world's largest sports book, Stadium Swim. Everybody's gambling over there, and their demand is certainly for it for Slam Ball. There is so much interest. So what was the shift that made you guys say, hey, we need to get numbers up for this thing? Well, I mean, just the energy. I mean, the phone calls today coming in, we're having a lot of fun with this. Like, uh, but the, are the odds makers here, not 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 the regular Circa Sportsbook odd makers like Jeff Benson and Chris Bennett's Banksy, Wilbo, myself, we already we already uh, hung a number. I think the mob the mob is a 31 and the total is 110 in the next game. That's how we would post it. Again, we're just learning. But next week we're gonna post some real numbers over here. So we're pretty excited about this. This is so great for Las Vegas and Stormy. I want to tell you something. Meeting Mason. I want to negotiate. Get in here, buddy. Hey, Mason. Here we go. Oh, now it's going dark. Oh, we'll do it next time. <laughs> Owner and, uh, so, excuse me, co-founder of Slam Ball, Mason Gordon, though. But how awesome is the connection that we're going to have with Slam Ball and Circa? This is tremendous. Circa is the biggest sports book in the world, and we want them to be first. We're so excited to be able to offer real money betting. So, so Stormy, what I like to do on the air, I want to negotiate with, I want to negotiate with Mason. I'd like to have the very first Slam Ball jersey patch on the mob. How's that sound? I love it. I love it. Here we go. Awesome. We got some breaking news. We will be back with Slam Ball in a moment. Pavilion here on the campus of UNLV, alongside John Dornboss, 14-year NFL vet, Stormy Bonantoni, our betting analyst. I am the voice of Slam Ball, John Schriffen. This is the team everyone came to see. It's the Mob, the only undefeated team left in Slam Ball. They are led by the Defensive Player of the Week, Gage Smith. He'll be going up against Mick Buckets, Keith McGee for the Ozone. And I'm a Gage Smith fan. Why? Look, he's a defensive player, but what did he say? Let's take a look at the starting lineups presented by Old Trapper. Keith McGee, Laquavius Cotton, Marcus Gray, Keenan Love is the stopper. And Keenan Love, he is an MMA fighter. He is as tough as they come. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the mob. Cameron Horton, Brandon Simpson, Darius Clark, and Gage Smith. And we start each game with a throwdown. The mob wearing the pinstripe red. And we're pleased to be joined in the booth by easy, Derek easy. Stevens, CEO and the owner of Circa Resort and Casino. Derek. This has been face awesome. Up. Let's go. Face this has up. been unbelievable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Great, to, great to be in the uh, in the booth with you guys. The energy face here, up. the energy Everybody here in Las Vegas has been amazing. The first game was tremendous. It comes down to the last second, and uh, man, is it is it awesome to be with you guys? First weekend, I went to the concession stand. Oh, well, there's an early dunk Ooh, by Cameron Horton off the face off. 
Everyone is buying mob jerseys. They are the number one team. Fans go crazy for mob gear right now. Yeah, you know, I just negotiated on air about uh, 20, uh, 20 seconds ago the first jersey uh, jersey patch saying Circus Sports on the mob's jersey right here. They and I had a handshake agreement. We'll figure out the rest of it uh, a little bit later. Darius Clark with the throwdown. Three points for a dunk. Two points for a shot inside the tramps, three points outside the tramp, and beyond that arc is a four-point shot. Here's McBuckets, one of the best scorers in the league, but we have two of the same team player in the tramps at once. That's a turnover against the Ozone. What was it about the mob that you want your patch on their jersey? Well, I mean, we're learning here, so this is going to be week two. We're trying to learn. Um, our, our crack staff put a put a number together. We're gonna, we're ready to post. We're gonna. This is going to be legal betting here next week at Circus Sports. Uh, this is the last week we're going to just do this to, uh, to test things out. For fun, we posted a number of the mob minus 30 in this game and a total of 110. Obviously, the mob stopper keeps the total number down. So we posted a 30 and 110. Next week, we post a real line at Circus Sports. Look at that stop by Gage Smith. So minus 30 for the fans at home new to sports betting. That means the mob would have to win by more than 30 points if you bet on them to win this game. That's correct. If the mob gets up to 70, they have, they have to win by more than 30 points to cash the ticket. John, how about these mid-air collisions? These guys have to be fearless to play slam ball. This is... You know, I was told this before I got here. This is going to be like un uh, unlike anything you've ever seen before. And like I said, when you are here seeing it live, when you're seeing a collision 15 feet in the air and free falling, it's super intense. Here's Mickey. Oh. That's exactly what I'm talking about. No collision, but I'm talking straight height and power coming down with authority. Simpson oh, and the away. answer right back. Brandon Simpson out of Germantown, Maryland with the answer. Three points for the dunk. This is definitely one of those games that you don't have time to think. You just have to react and make plays. And the ability that you don't have time to think, it takes away some of the fear. That masked man is Gage Smith underneath the basket. His job is to stop the ball from going in. He got hurt in their first game. That's why he's wearing the mask. These guys are getting banged up on pretty much every play, but they just keep coming at it. Are you kidding? Look, look at Gage Smith. That's how we. That's why we wanted to post a number like a 31-10. This defense of the stopper is unbelievable. I mean, this guy's Superman right here. Man, look at that. <laughs> but now when you look at the strategy of the mob and why they're doing so well, they'll bring oh. Gage Smith up, not just from a stopper position, but they actually view him as like a quarterback, right? He's actually kind of running the offense, and then he'll get back and play defense, where some teams don't really utilize the stopper position in that uh, area. The mob have blown out every single team they played so far here in Slam Ball. There Huge is again. stop by Gage Smith. Smith. Huge. Defensive player of the week showing you what he does best. Defensive player of the week. I want to post who's going to be MVP. He's, going to be, he's, a, he's a heavy favorite for MVP, Gage Smith. Are you kidding me? And what I love about Gage, he had a quote, right? Why does the offense have to have all the fun? So as a stopper, he's got an offensive mentality to showboat, and he wants to try and do flips and spins and make blocking super cool. Got to give some love to the other stopper. That was Keenan Love right there with the stop for the Ozone. And McGee, another stop there by Smith. You know, we talked about this earlier, what makes a good stopper, right? And there's two things, fearlessness and great timing. And the offense is going to try and get the timing of the stopper off guard. But when you look at Cage Smith, his ability to time it up and jump off the tramp is unbelievable. That was Keenan Love with the stop. He's an MMA fighter. He's 3-0 as a record as a fighter. But he just got dunked on there by Darius Clark of the mob. Hey, John, what do you think? Have you ever thought about anything about this? Think about all the NFL camps you were through. Think about this, the energy here. What do you think? I, I don't think I would last two minutes on this court. <laughs> I will tell you, you got to have some knees here, man. This is a track and football player sport. Maybe a little hockey. This is a whole different level of endurance. This is not your ordinary tramp in your backyard. This is Olympic grade tramps. These things fly you into the air. Here cutting from the wing is Clark and two mob players in the same tramp. That's a turnover. Yeah, you can't do it. Hey, fellas, I'm going to tell you what. I appreciate the opportunity to be in this in this booth with you guys. Oh, Huge 360. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. 
that's was, why Circa wants to put some yeah, lines on this boy. thing. Get it on the action. Oh my Tennessee goodness, look at that look, look at that 360 right there. That was beautiful. Hey, fellas, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys. I cannot wait to do the rest of the season with you. You boys are unbelievable. Derek Stevens, CEO, owner of Circa Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas. Appreciate you spending some time and supporting Slam Ball. Thanks, fellas. That'll do it for the first quarter. It's the Mob, the only undefeated team left here in Slam Ball with a two-point lead. Gage Smith, the stopper for the Mob. He already has three big stops, John. I love it. I'm watching Gabe all game long. Cameron Horton, Mob, number four, and I love, I love to fly. I like to get off the trampolines. The physical part of the hockey, that's cool, but it's nothing like being 20 feet up in the air and looking down into the rim. It looks easy. It looks very easy, but they don't understand that uh, time, passing, patience. Like, it's just not a sport that you just go out there and just think you just, oh, I'm just going to go out there and dunk all the time. Oh, you got lines. You got to remember, this thing is physical. You're not just flying out there. You got to have a head on a swivel. They are taking some hits out here. Pop, yep. Welcome back Legal here contact. inside Cox Case Pavilion. Alongside the John Dornboss, 14-year NFL Marcel. vet. Stormy Bond and Tony, our betting analyst. And the voice of Slam Ball, John Schriffen. Huh? Second quarter, we play five-minute quarter scene Slam Ball. Here's the scoring. Hey, Three points for a dunk. Two points for any shot inside Ready? the tramp. Three points for a shot outside the tramp. And now we have a face-off. Oh! oh! Big Three stop. Point. Three point. Anytime you can get a defensive stop on a face-off, it's a huge advantage. Hey, hey. Justin Holloway for the mob denies. Helmet on, helmet on. You know, here's something really cool, right? You got Brian Bell Anderson, who was drafted by his dad. His dad is the coach of the Ozone. Drafted him on Father's Day, and just seeing the interaction of them on the sideline, it's a moment that I wish I would have had. Legal contact, penalty points, two points, legal contact, we go. So we only have one face-off per team per quarter. Any additional fouls after that are in the bonus. So because they're in the second foul, two points awarded to the Ozone, and they keep possession. Wavius Cotton enters the tramp from the wing, now into the bottom slam zone. Once you leave the springs, you've got to reset off the wall. Throwing it to himself is a no, form of not. dribbling here in no, slam ball. Not. And here comes the stopper, Gage Smith. <laughs> Going it up! Showtime. He's one of those guys from the Pacers power pack. He dunks for a living during halftime of the Indiana Pacers games. You know, the one thing you can appreciate about, uh, appreciate about the mob offense is the way they spread it out. Uh, the it, their, their ability to pass the ball around, to move the ball, and to get the defense off balance is it's fun to watch. Missing the dunk, a good stop there by Vincent Bauman. Here come McBuckets, and that's illegal. You can only stand on that middle pad called the island. If you stand on any other pads, it's a restricted zone, and it's automatically a turnover. <laughs> a two-point lead for the mob right now here in this second quarter. Flyer coming through from the top. And that they call him Mountain, they call him Lumberjack, six foot nine, 265. Vincent Bauman, the stopper for the Ozone. He's a force underneath. This guy is enormous. I don't know about you, but if I'm jumping off a trampling, dunking 15 feet in the air, I don't want 6'9, 260 coming after me. Shot clock violation, so the mob force a turnover. This is how quickly slam ball works. After the violation, you just throw the ball back. There's no reset out of bounds. 
which becomes so crucial on how you use your stopper, right? Does he cherry pick? Does he get involved in the offense? But you almost always need a guy ready to play defense. There's Bowman underneath at 6'9", pouncing on that ball. How'd you like to see him coming at you? I, I don't. I, I don't want to see him coming at me in any aspect of life. <laughs> Ozone are hanging around. The mob have destroyed every team they faced. You heard Derek Stevens yep, talk yep. about no, a hypothetical line he would have put at minus 30. They're not even close to it right now. This is a good ball game. I don't know about you, but it, it doesn't seem like they are as crisp coming into this game as we've seen them, especially last weekend. And the mob are a team that we were all kind of wondering coming into today, what have they done? What's the special sauce that they have that nobody else has quite figured out yet? They saw Darius Clark. He quick jumped him. So quick jump means there's two ways to really attack the rim. You can do off the high bounce, or with speed, just go straight yeah, yeah. at the oh, yeah, rim, yeah, yeah. and that's what Darius Clark did right there. So three points off the face-off dunk. They keep possession. Here's the mob attacking again. You know, the stopper, Vincent Bowman, you know, not only is he a big body, but this guy played professional rugby. So, I mean, you got a guy who's got a huge basketball background, shot 63% back in the day, and guess what? Now he's got a rugby background, and you put him on this court where everything's legal? This is going to be one of the most exciting players to come out of this game. Here he is with the ball, number 15 for the Ozone. Oh, he gets laid out by Simpson. But because he left the ground entering the tramp, that was a foul. He was not allowed to get touched. The mob don't play by regular rules, though. They do their own thing out here. Hey, they're the mob. They're the mob. I think it says it all. So because that's the second foul after the faceoff, two points automatically for the Ozone, and they keep the rock. McBuckets tipped away. Love pouncing on it. Ozone just down by three. And give the Ozone credit, they're coming into this one and two, but they felt like they were better than that, and they're showing it earlier, being so competitive with the mob. You see that guy right there, Keenan Love? He got his chin busted open in their last game last weekend. I said, how you doing? He said, oh, the medical staff just glued it together. I'm good to go. I said, what? He goes, yeah, I'm an MMA fighter. That's all it takes. It's glued, I'm out here, and there he is throwing his body around. That's the attitude, and that's the medical staff you want. Glue it, get back out there, kid. Do you ever have anything glued, glued back together? Uh, yeah, I've seen some pretty gnarly stuff. Uh, I've seen some hams busted open and they got that fake skin. It's amazing what you can glue back together, but you get the heart of a champion, they'll glue anything back together to get back on that field. Here's McBuckets McGee avoiding the contact, but he traveled because he stepped on the no man's land, the black pad that was not part of the island. Shot clock turned off, 15 seconds to play here in this first half. Here's Simpson. Standing on that island, he's got to get off within three seconds. Outside shot, this was a three, and it goes for Justin Holloway. Those are the big shots that when you're wide open and you can execute, those points add up big time. So the mob are in a tight one. A six-point lead with the Ozone flying through. Mob doing what the mob does. They're a fan favorite out here in Vegas. They've got a first-half lead. We thank you for being a part of this action here in Las Vegas, all the youngsters. They didn't see the first generation that started 20 years ago, but they want to be a part of this one. It is back. Slam ball, a combination of basketball, football, hockey, and gymnastics. We take a look at the highlights from that first half. Leading scorer, Darius Clark, nine points. He had three slams flying through. Gage Smith, the stopper for the mob, he had five stops in that first half. They were impressive on offense. I, 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 to me, this entire game is an impressive offense. This whole thing is offense. So when you get big defensive plays, that's going to that's gonna add up and that's going to make a big difference in this ballgame. Let's take a look at our halftime stats presented by Circa Resorts. The Mob with a six-point lead, six stops to two. One big stat that's not on there, Keith McGee, one of the leading scorers for the Ozone, four turnovers. The mob feel like he's a little soft. 
they were going at him. They wanted to be more physical with him, Stormy, and they forced four turnovers in that first half. Yeah, that was one of their keys coming into the game was that they felt that they could attack him a little bit more. And it's interesting because I spoke to Keith McGee before the game, and I asked him where does he think that he has the biggest challenge, and he said coming from a basketball background, there's there's not contact there. He did he played collegiate basketball. I kind of joked with him, basketball players. You're known for flops. This is a little right. bit different. And he said yes, so I've been working on my agility, but it's been interesting to see how they've been able to get to him here early and force him into some trouble. Keith McGee played his college hoops at New Mexico and finished up at Morgan State HBCU proud. There's definitely a, a mentality of basketball and football. When you've got a guy that's basketball driven, you're going to have to get physical and change that part of your game. Alongside jo John Dornboss, Stormy Bonantoni, I'm John Schriffen. Six-point lead for the mob. Try, try, and there's try, a travel try, turnover try. to the Ozone. Are you surprised watching that first weekend? The mob blew everybody out, but the Ozone, they're still hanging around in this one. You know what's funny is sometimes wins can be deceiving, right? It depends how, in, in the locker room, it depends how the mob handles victory. It depends how they handle winning. If it doesn't get to their head, they can stay in their game and continue to execute. They got a shot, but if they think they're better than they are, then you're going to get an Ozone come and and give you a little uh, piece of humble pie. And I think another element to that, too, is the mob, because of how dominant they were that opening weekend, they've got a bit of a target on their back, too. Everybody's gunning to beat this team now. And you wonder if they have a false perception of reality and, and how easy this really is, right? Sometimes, sometimes things go your way and other teams aren't gelling at that moment. It kind of gives you a little maybe false sense of confidence, but we're about to find out. This is week two of action, and we're talking to a lot of the players. They felt like in this three days that they had off, they got the chance to practice, get more familiar with the tramps, get more familiar with this kind of losing that fear when you're up in the air. And a lot of these teams felt like they got a lot better in the last three days heading now into this week two. I think also the opening weekend, there was a little bit of a nerves factor. It's your first time on national television with a crowd in front of you before during training camp in that warehouse setting with nobody around. This is a different game. Cameron Horton. Yeah, it's he called the real deal. <laughs> That quick first step on the face-off after the foul, the first in the quarter. We do a face-off and set of free throws. Horton, he just took off. Yeah, I don't think there was ever even a, a, a doubt in that in his mind he was scoring. So after a face-off, the offensive team keeps the ball. Here's Corton in the bottom tramp. Finds the cutter, and the lob was off the mark. Mob keep the ball. Shot clock's down to seven. Holloway on the island, finds the cutter. Good stop by Keenan Love, the stopper for the Ozone. Nick Buckets, they want to target him. They don't think he's physical. My Lost guy, it midair. Oh, my guy Cage almost two for two. I don't know what the call face is here. Off. They're going to call a face-off. When you're the stopper, you have to make a play Everybody on the ball. Man. You can't just take out the body. So here's Marcus Gray. From Jefferson, Indiana, with the faceoff, he's going up against Gage Smith. And this is who the mob wants back there. But it's Marcus Gray says, take that one. And his teammates love it over here in the bench area. And if you watch this, look, Cage, he timed it perfect. Some players just make plays, didn't work out for him. Nicknamed Swank, ready to go. He's another one of those football players now converting here to slam ball. Oh, that was nasty by Love. And things can get a little chippy. You said it early on, Stormy. The mob, they've got a target on their back. Teams want to take a shot at them. No question. That's what, I mean, they know it, right? So they're prepared for it, but at the same time, when a team is coming in here and they're being physical every single play and they're targeting you, it's a tough task. Look, when I played and there was a team winning, you were sick of hearing about it. You just wanted to shut everybody up. So you better believe that everybody here, everybody on the Ozone, they want to shut the mob up. Okay, when you were the Eagles, who was that team in the NFL? Every single one we played. <laughs> <laughs> we, nobody Two likes points. anybody. You Two want to points. beat everybody. Our big rival was Dallas and, and uh, the Giants, but man, you're going against everybody. Here's McGee into the slam zone. When you leave the tramp, you reset off the wall. Nice job Almost by two Bell people Anderson. He hung on the rim to avoid two in the tramp, and the jumper goes for Cotton. Ozone, they are hanging around here. This is a good ball game. I mean, another rule that I absolutely love, it's not you can't hang on the rim, it's we encourage it. It's actually an advantage to do so, and that's what the fans love to see. Four-point lead for the mob. 
hold. and a hold Fancy on the point. outside Fancy by Fancy Brian point. Bell Two Anderson point. from the Ozone. Number nine for the Ozone. He's a former football player, played his football in the Ivy League at Columbia. A defensive back, he's the first pick for the Ozone. And that's just too easy. Brandon Simpson, the stopper, missed time to jump. This might be something they're gonna bet on. We might have to make a little uh, a little bet on who's gonna be the first person to break a backboard. Get some props out there. We need to talk to Derek Stevens. We need some unique props, the novelty ones yes. like that. I need some stop props, the way he's been talking about Gage tonight. And you better the believe window. they're gonna love to bet on all that stuff. I'll try to work my magic, yep. gentlemen. Those oh. are the bragging right bets. Stormy, bring it to us. Give the people what they want. Legal content. Two points, two points. So because we only have Ozone one face-off per Ozone quarter, ball. any foul after that, the team is awarded two points until we're into the double bonus. So two more points for the Ozone, and they keep the ball. Down by 11, Ozone trying to hang around. There's Bell Anderson, the Ivy Leaguer, and he's bumped heading into the air. And he loves that, because that's two more points for the Ozone. They're just racking up fouls now. Back him up. Well, when you can't foul out, right, it does make a little uh, a little advantage. Well, that's the thing. You can only do one of those foul moves per quarter, and so otherwise you just get the points, which can be frustrating if you put yourself in that position. Bell Anderson tried to take out the Contact. stopper. Gage's oh, face smack was shifted. Contact on the stopper. That was a Holds big hit. You're not going to say that was a foul no, on the mob. They're going to call that against oh. Gage points, Smith. No, no so another two, two points, points three for points. the Ozone, and they're down by six. You wonder if this is a strategy that hasn't yet been explored, but there's no rule for how long you can hang on the rim. That's a good point. I like you know that. what I mean? Like, you three wonder seconds, if there's an advantage here. here That's a three-second violation. You can't hang on the island. So the island is basically the equivalent to the paint on a basketball court. Can't be there for more than three seconds. That's a turnover. Under a minute to play in this third quarter. Ozone, they're vocal. They know that they're in this game against the mob, trying to give them their first loss of the season. Five Losing races. the handle and a travel. Races, travel. Substitutions made on the fly, just like in hockey. New players coming onto the court. Mob trying to take advantage. Here comes Simpson. Look at the crisscrossing. The offense for the mob is so different. And they really utilize everybody. They try and get the, the ball in the hands of everyone and spread out the defense. You know, when they watch film, they have separate sessions. One, one we're going to dissect what we're doing and get better. Two, we're going to find a weakness in the opposing defense, and we're going to attack it all game long and figure out the best way to do so. Cotton. Violation, no map. Oh. Hey, travel. When you come off of one tramp and into another, you've got to release the ball. He didn't. That's called a travel. Cam Smith, coast, coast to coast. coast. Baskets got three points. Score it. Ozone trying to hang with them. Keenan Love on, says, come on, come on. we're still in this one. We go to the fourth quarter. Back to action already underway. You can't even stop the action. It's so <laughs> quick out here in Slam Ball. John Dornbaugh, Stormy Bond and Tony. I'm John Schrippen. Five minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. We're at 4.13 already, kicking off the clock. The Ozone down by 11. Here come the mob. Big steal by Cage. Big hop from the oh, makers. And he throws it down with the offhand for three more points.
McBuckets couldn't get up. I mean, look at that. Cage, his presence is just intimidating. He didn't even jump. Look at that collision right here on the bench. Good hustle. Good hustle. Tie up. This is the closest game the mob have been in all season. Stormy, from a betting perspective, it's hard to handicap because we don't even know what's going to happen yet. Yeah, that hypothetical plus 30 is looking pretty good right now of um, the number that Derek gave us earlier. But this is a team that, I mean, they're winning by an average of 26 and a half points per game Tie coming up. into this one. You know, I don't, care, I don't care what the difference Tie in score up. is. You can't get frustrated. You play till the end. So you're starting to see some of the Ozone guys get a little bit frustrated. They just got to slow down, compose themselves, execute, and score. And that's what Keith McGee was actually talking to his teammates about in this last break. He just kept telling everybody to stay positive. You're never out of it until the game's over, especially in the speed of this game. So a turnover. Two of the same teammates in the same tramp as a turnover. Taken off. Hollins off the mark. Another stop by Keenan Love. Cotton from the wing. Gets the stopper off the wood. Has a cutter. And there's Bell Anderson laying it in. I mean, you look at Cage, right? He, he gets the rebound off the bucket, even though it was made. But he gets that thing out in a hurry and gets the mob's offense started. Good deflection, Ozone. Down by 12. <clears throat> because the scoring can come so quickly, three points for a dunk, four points for a shot outside the arc, you're never really out of it. Yeah, well, and to that point, Brandon Kirsch said that you're never comfortable either. Like, a 15-point lead can go away like that. So that's a big reason why some of these other games have maybe gotten a little bit out of hand with scoring margin because they just have that hesitation. There's our MMA fighter, Keenan Love, with a stop for the Ozone. Bell Anderson, the Ivy Leaguer, freestyling, throwing to himself. Oh, he tried it. You know, it's funny how life works its way out. Kate Smith, fan favorite, everybody loves him. But when you look at the way he lives his life, he's a 4.0 student, academic All-American, athletic standout. He just handles his business and gives everything he has in every aspect of his life. And that's somebody that you root for, and that's somebody that you want to see succeed. Another stop by Keenan Love. <laughs> Ozone down by 12 at Simpson. Right there, Sal. Knocking it out of bounds. Ozone ball. Do they have one last push in them? The winner of this game will move on to the main event next. They will take on the Griffs, who won our first game tonight. What a touch Two shot. The Marcus Two Gray. It's your helmet. It's your helmet, you but They said two Time in out. the tramp. They waved it off. No bucket. Time out, and Bob. a timeout by the mob. Bob. It's Brendan Kirsch, head coach. He wants the timeout to talk things over. 111 to play. Yeah, no basket first. Two in the bottom, right? No basket. So if you're no new basket. to slam ball, let's no take basket. a look at our bracket for each That's night. Three. We start with four teams. The winner of the first two games so will the play basket, right? against each so other the in the main good. event coming up basket's next. Good. Now, the main event is important. The more main that events you win good, over the course of the regular good, season, that'll be the differentiator come playoff time Here, in terms right. of seeding. You gotta rack up the wins. And the Mob, the only undefeated team left in slam ball, they're 4-0 right now. Yeah, and it's a big advantage to have that first game. You get a little bit of a rest, right? So the winner of the first game is going to rest a little bit, and then they're going to play the winner of uh, whoever the, the winner of the Ozone and the Mob are. Man, you, you, you want, you want two, that first game two, every two, night. That's fine. You're off. Yes. We're good. They have 41. But in slam ball with the speed, there's no there's no time for pity parties. You win, you move on, you play. Oh, three, three, what a three play five. drawn up out of the timeout for Brandon Simpson and the Mob. That might have just done it. Layup spins out. No good. Two in the bottom. Two in the tree. Ozone have the ball. It's a running clock. Three. One minute to come play. Back, come back, come back. Ozone's got to get busy. Cotton off the big bounce. Legal contact. And he is fouled. Face off. Legal contact. We will have face a face off. off. So it'll be Laquavius Cotton. Yes. He's a Harlem you. Globetrotter. He Slow plays down. Michael Cooper on the Showtime for the Lakers. He's an actor, but he shows you he can get physical out here. Here's a face-off. Cotton, one-on-one. -on -one. Ozone, they need this bucket. Big bounce. Oh! Three. With the one-handed one. hammer. 
You know, the other thing I love about watching this and rooting for players, you got Justin Holloway on the mob, right? This guy grew up a fan of slam ball. And he said, as soon as I knew it was coming back, I was determined to play. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Here he is on the field playing and being a leader for the best team in the game right now. And you just watch how much fun he's having. I love it. Mob, they get the stop. Here comes Simpson. Oh, great play. Cameron Horton loses his helmet. He don't care. That's one of those dunks that when I close my eyes and dream at night, I'm that guy. And I will never be that guy. That was unbelievable. Simpson lowers the shoulder. Oh. Another big hit. Watch out. The mob coming at you. McGee, final seconds. The mob, they know they got this one wrapped up. Under 10 seconds to play and a shot clock violation. Shot no clock. bucket for love. Shot clock. The mob can just hold it and run it out with six seconds to play. They inbound and that'll, that should do it. The mob will run out the clock. They hold on. This was their closest game of the season. They win it 49-36 over the Ozone. The mob stay undefeated. They move to 5-0, and they'll play next in the main event against the Griffs. If you're new to Slam Ball, thanks for joining us. This is a party, and it's not done just yet. Main event is up next here in Vegas.